Good afternoon. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. It is now time for the word. Welcome once again to Midweek Live with yours truly, Minister Tanya Brown. I'm so glad that you have taken time out of your afternoon schedules to be a part of Midweek Live. Good afternoon, Mrs. Yvette Rees. Ms. Good afternoon, Minister Patricia Frazier. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to give a couple of people just a few moments to join us. Good afternoon, Ms. Wilson. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you're joining me tonight. This is the day that our Lord has made. Minister Ware, good afternoon. Miss Melissa Sanford, good afternoon. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I've got a word for you tonight on this first Wednesday in 2023. That's right, Miss Yvonne Whitfield, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss Annie Reese. This first Wednesday, in 2023, there is a word from the Lord. And the word tonight comes from the New Testament. It comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. Good afternoon, Miss Diane Harris Preston. So glad that you could take time out of your afternoon to be a part of Midweek Live. From Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19, those are the verses that we will begin to focus on tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke chapter 10, verse seven, verses 17 through 19. Thank you, Miss Marnette Wilson, for putting that up on the screen. Tonight, our topic tonight, authority over Satan. That's the topic tonight, authority over over Satan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the topic. Authority over Satan. Would you just go ahead and share the word to somebody tonight? Yes, you can be a cyber evangelist. Go ahead and share this message out tonight. Tag, tag someone. Let them know that Midweek Live is on the air. All right, authority over Satan tonight. Yes, I'm excited about this message. At this particular time in Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19, at this particular time, the 70 disciples whom Yeshua had previously commissioned had now returned with a good report. Yes, he had previously sent out 70 disciples disciples and they come back with a good report. If you recall, he had commissioned these 70 disciples to go out two by two out into the villages and into the towns and the surrounding areas to preach about the kingdom in order to prepare for his arrival. In essence, these disciples had been commissioned to do what John had done aforetime, to prepare ye the way of the Lord, authority over Satan. Upon their return, Yeshua, upon their return, they come back to Yeshua. And when they get there, the 70 are excited, Miss Isella Wilson. They are pumped. They are on fire for the Lord. Their excitement is expressed in verse number 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Notice their, notice their excitement. And the 70 returned again with joy, with joy. Somebody ought to have some joy. Somebody ought to have some joy this afternoon that you are still among the living. They said with joy, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Jesus uses this opportunity, my brothers and my sisters, 
to teach the disciples about Satan and their power over Satan. Yes, unspeakable joy. Good afternoon, Miss D. Peterson. Good afternoon, Miss Gracie Talbert. Hallelujah. He uses this as an opportunity to teach, my God. And if he's using it as an opportunity and teach, I believe somebody ought to learn something tonight. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, Miss Riggins. He teaches them how to win. And if you're going to win in 2023, there are some things that you must know and understand as it relates to Satan. And for just a little while tonight, we will take a look at the adversary. We will take a look at the agenda of the adversary and our authority over the adversary's ability. Did you get that? We will look at the adversary. We will look at the agenda of the adversary. And then we're going to take a look at authority, our authority over the adversary's ability. It's all in this text, the adversary. The first thing that we're going to look at tonight is the adversary. The adversary is Satan. Yes, the adversary is Satan. First Peter chapter five, verse 18 tells us that the devil, Satan is our adversary. It is vitally important, my brothers and my sisters, that you understand that Satan is real and we are in a real war. Satan is real and we are in a real war and you cannot defeat an opponent, my brothers and my sisters, unless you first recognize that there is an opponent and there is an opponent and he is Satan. Ephesians chapter six reminds the believer that there is spiritual warfare going on. It's going on right now, Minister Frazier. Even as I teach tonight, we are in the midst of spiritual warfare. Notice my brothers and my sisters, what Yeshua says to the 70 disciples, Luke 10 and 18. And Yeshua said to them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. The, remember the disciples came back. They were excited because they saw that demons were subject to them at the name of Yeshua. And Yeshua says unto them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from from heaven. The adversary, Satan, was once an angel who dwelled with the other angels in heaven. However, Satan became prideful. He wanted to exalt himself above the other angels, and he wanted to not only be like God, he wanted to be God. Therefore, God kicked him out, Miss Brindy. God kicked him out of heaven. And if you want to find further reference on that, if you want to do more background reading on that, you can look at Ezekiel chapter 28 and is and Isaiah chapter 14. Good afternoon, Evangelist Thomas. And the takeaway here, the key to winning in spiritual warfare is to know that your adversary, Satan, exists. You can't win the battle until you have identified your opponent. And we already told you, we said that the opponent, our opponent, the adversary, according to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, is Satan. Satan is the adversary. Now that we have looked at the adversary, let's look at the adversary's agenda. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 
right there in that particular chapter, in that particular verse, the writer compares the adversary to a roaring lion. The adversary's agenda or his assignment, my brothers and my sisters, is to disrupt and to destroy the work of God. That's the second point if you're taking notes. The adversary's assignment or his agenda. It is to disrupt and to destroy the work of Almighty God. The adversary in 1 Peter 5 and 8 is compared to a roaring lion. It is said that a lion's roar can be heard from miles around, which reminds me, my brothers and my sisters, that you can hear the enemy coming before the enemy makes its entrance. You can hear the enemy coming before the enemy ever arrives. You can hear the thunder before you see the lightning. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can see the dark clouds coming before the rain falls. When you get word, my brothers and my sisters, let me put this in your lap. When you get word that certain people are on their way before they ever arrive, anger sets in, anxiety sets in, depression sets in. Why? The lion is roaring because you already know that whenever they are around, whenever they arrive, there is disorder, there is unrest, there is chaos, there is drama. The lion is roaring, my God. And I'm talking to some people tonight already. Here it is, just the first week in 2023, and the lion is roaring. The adversary, my brothers and my sisters, it tells us that he's roaring. And then it says the adversary is walking about. In other words, he makes his presence known. So often we refer to the lion as being the king of the jungle because it pumps its chest up and makes its presence known. He is roaming the earth. He is roaming around, my brothers and my sisters, looking for something to get into. He is looking for somebody to bother. He is looking for some mess to start. He is looking for some havoc to reap. He is looking for some distress destruction in the land. He is looking for openings and access points to enter into our lives. That's right. He's looking for openings or access points to enter into your life and to enter into my life. Right now, the adversary is lurking around trying to figure out how to gain access into your life. That's why my brothers and my sisters, you've got to, first of all, if you don't want him to gain access, you've got to guard your eye gate, that which you see. You've got to guard your eye gate. Everything that looks good is not good. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Guard your eye gate. Secondly, you've got to guard your ear gate. Whatever the adversary is whispering in your ear, it's a lie. Whatever he ever told you, it was a lie. Because he is the father of lies. He is a liar. That's why we often say the devil is a lie. He is a liar. Guard your ear gate. Then you've got to guard your mouth gate. Remember, we don't want him to gain access or an entry point into our lives. Stop confessing words that don't align with the word of God. Yes, the adversary, we said that he's roaring. The adversary is walking about. But then the adversary is seeking whom he may devour. 
That's right. He's looking for somebody with their guards down. He's looking for somebody who has itching ears that is allowing him to whisper into their ears. He is seeking whom he may devour. The word may implies that he may or he may not. The word may implies that there is a possibility, but if there's a possibility, there's also an impossibility. And I came by to let somebody know tonight that you need to guard your eye gate, guard your ear gate, guard your mouth gate so that you can make it become an impossibility for him to gain access into your life. Your job is to make it difficult for him. Your job is to make it impossible for him to enter into your life. When he gains access, my brothers and my sisters, he plans to devour your life. He plans to completely destroy you. That's right. Devour, devour, D-E-V-O-U-R. That's what that means. He wants to utterly destroy you. He wants to tear you up. He wants to mess your home life up. He wants to mess your job up. He wants to mess your friendships up. He wants to mess your pocketbook up. He wants to mess your health up. He wants to completely devour you. John 10.10 10 sums it up best. He plans to steal, he plans to kill, and he plans to destroy. And what I need you to understand is that if the adversary is working in your life, he has to get permission, Miss Watkins, from Almighty God. If he is working, he has to get permission. The Bible lets us know that demons need permission from God to do their work. When the adversary attacked Job, God gave him permission. In Mark chapter 5, when the demons got out of the demoniac and got into the pigs, Jesus gave them permission permission. Paul said, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. Whatever the thorn was, it was permitted, my brothers and my sisters, because when Paul asked God to remove it, God answered, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine. The takeaway, the adversary's agenda is to make his presence known, to gain access into our lives, and to ultimately destroy us. The target of his agenda is God's kingdom. The target of his agenda is you. The target of his agenda is me. We are on his hit list. Yes, we are his target. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil for the devil devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil aren't you glad my brothers and my sisters that yeshua was sent to straighten up what the devil messed up we have looked at the adversary Satan is real. We have looked at the adversary's agenda. He wants to wreak havoc in the lives of the believers. Lastly, we will look at our authority over the adversary's ability. Our authority over the adversary's ability. Now that we understand that there is a real adversary and the adversary has an agenda, we will now shift our attention to our authority. Somebody type that in, authority. I want you to know tonight that you have some authority. Here in Luke chapter 10, the 70 disciples return to the Messiah with a good report. They are elated because they have obviously, by their own testimony, witnessed the obedience of demons at the name of Yeshua. Yeshua tells them that he witnessed Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yeshua then tells them, behold, I give you power. In the King James, 
version, the word power in verse 19 is used two times. It's used twice. The first time that it is used, it means authority. I told you to type that in. The Greek word for authority is exousia, E-X-O-U-S-I-A. Yeshua says unto them, I have given you the authority authority to operate in my name. I have given you authority to operate in my name. I have given you authority to cast out demons in my name. I have given you authority to heal the sick in my name. I have given you authority to trample upon serpents in my name. I have given you authority to trample upon scorpions in my name. And back over in Mark 16 and 18, he says, I have given you authority to drink any deadly thing and it shall by any means not harm you in my name. I have given you authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in my name. I told you that here in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, the word power is used twice. The first word power refers to authority, originating from the Greek word exousia. The second word power here refers to ability. Somebody type that in, which comes from the Greek word dunamis, D-U-N-A-M-I-S. It comes from the Greek word dunamis, D-U-N-A-M-I-S. Dunamis means strength or ability. Yeshua said unto the 70, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. In the King James Version, both words are technically used in the same sentence, separated by a phrase and a comma. If we read the verse without the phrase and the comma, Minister Bozeman, it would read like this. I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. Don't miss that. If we take the phrase out and the comma, it reads, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. Translate. I have given you authority over all the ability of the enemy. What he is saying, my brothers and my sisters, good afternoon, Miss Janie Brown, unto the disciples, and what he is saying unto us is that he has given us authority over any ability. He has given us authority over any strength. He has given us authority over any dynamite. He has given us authority over any force that the adversary has assigned unto us. His roar is loud, Deacon Carl Brown. His roar is frightening. And the enemy is using the loudness of his roar to keep you from hearing the word of the Most High God. The challenge as we begin a brand new year is to cancel the roar of the enemy. We must do it with the word of God. When the enemy roars loudly, we must speak God's word even louder. When the enemy roars boldly, we must take our authority and begin to use it. When the adversary attacks, we must plan a counter attack with the word of God. We must cry aloud, my God, spare not, and lift up our voices like a trumpet, according to Isaiah 58 and 1. The takeaway, Yeshua has given us power of attorney. He has made us POA, power of attorney. We have the legal right to act on his behalf. He has authorized us to perform just as he has performed. He has given us authority to use his name. Yes, you have POA. You have power of attorney to use his name. You do know that there is power 
in his name, don't you? Philippians chapter 2 and 10 reminds us that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow. In closing, my brothers and my sisters, there are going to be times in life when it seems that the adversary is winning. I'm talking to some people who have been in that place. During these moments of frustration and despair, when it seems as if the adversary is getting an upper hand, I want to remind you, I want you to remember that whatever you are going through, it will not last because it is temporary. It is for a season. Second Corinthians 4 and 17 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Take courage, my brothers and sisters, in knowing that when one third of the angels were kicked out of heaven, along with Satan, two thirds of the angels remain in heaven with God. This reminds me, and I wanted to remind you that greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. First John 4 and 4. I want you to remember, take courage tonight. Romans 8 and 31 says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And Romans 8 and 37, and we're going to close with this encouraging word. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's the word of God tonight. Authority over Satan. That's our word tonight. I pray that this word has been a blessing for you. I pray that it is a blessing unto you. And I hope, my hopes, my hopes are that you will share this word with somebody else. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead and share it with somebody else. Yeshua. Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer tonight. Everlasting God, we come before you tonight. We thank you for this word, God, that has gone forth, God. We thank you that your word does not return void, but it accomplishes everything that you sent it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, for moving, God, among your people. We thank you, Lord, for opening their ears so that they might receive what thus saith the Lord. We thank you, God, that this word has been implanted down in their hearts so that in the evil day, God, that they will go within and pull it up and use it, God, just as you intended. Because we know, God, that one word from you can turn our situation around. Now, God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for permeating our lives, God. We thank you, Lord, for having your mercy and grace, God. We thank you for extending your mercy and grace unto us. We thank you for the new mercies that you have given us each and every day. Now, God, we bless your name. We magnify your name. We exalt you high above whatever it is we're facing, God. In the mighty, awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My God. My God. That's the word of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. You can go back and uh, read those background scriptures in your own spare time. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah chapter 14, 1 Peter 5 and 8, Luke 10. Those are our scriptures for tonight. Please be blessed, be safe, keep walking with God, and remember that God will walk with you. Until next time, be blessed.